quick tutorial on how to use icon fonts in Keynote in place of graphics and image files. Uh, now in order to get started we need to actually get a hold of an icon font, download it, and install it. And to do that I'm going to go online. Now on the internet there are literally dozens of sites that offer free fonts that can be downloaded and installed on your computer. There's one that I particularly like which is called Font Squirrel which you see right here. It's fontsquirrel.com. Uh, but of course you could use any site you want. Now when you get to a, a font website, um, what you're going to look for are what they call icon fonts, pictograms, or in this case Font Squirrel calls these dingbats. Now what these are is they're actual fonts but in the place of letters and numbers that you would normally get in a font, in this case you actually get images as you can see here. So each of these is actually a different font set and they're giving you a little preview here. And so these can be downloaded and installed on your computer and used just like you would use any other font in pretty much any app. This includes numbers and pages and Keynote and, and any other desktop apps you have. Uh, so I'm going to pick one. I'm going to go with the modern pictograms here and I'm going to download the file. Uh, in the download you're looking for either an OTF or a TTF type of file. Those can both be installed and run on a Mac system. So I'm going to go ahead and download the file and I'm going to go ahead and unzip it and let's take a look at what is in this folder that they give us here. Let's get the internet out of the way and uh, what I see are two files. There's a, a license which is a common create, uh, Creative Commons license and I see my OTF file. Now all I need to do is double click on the OTF file and it will launch an app called Fontbook which you see right here. And in Fontbook, this is the app that manages all your fonts, all your system fonts on the Mac. I'm going to go ahead and click Install Font. And it will go ahead and do that for you. Uh, now the one thing is you have to validate the font. See it says problems may have been found with some fonts. Please review the problems before continuing. So if you look at this, um, I'm looking at these fonts and you see there are some issues with it. Uh, however, nothing that's going to prevent us from using it. So I'm going to go ahead and choose it and, and install it anyway, regardless of those issues. Uh, and that typically is a rule when installing all fonts. Most of the issues are minor things that won't prevent you from actually using the font. So I'm going to go ahead and quit Fontbook and close my Finder window. And I'm going to launch a Keynote presentation here. We'll actually make a new Keynote presentation. Uh, the presentation, here we go. I'm using the gradient theme, though it doesn't matter, of course. And I'm going to go ahead and add a text box just like I would with any text. But here's the interesting part. What I want to do is I want to change the font here to the icon font that I just downloaded and installed. Now to do this you can either do Command F, I'm sorry not Command F, Command T and that will bring up your your font options and you can kind of scroll through there. What I generally use though is the font drop down menu up in the toolbar. And so I'm going to go ahead, go ahead and drop that down. And now I need to look for the font. Now the one thing that's tricky about this is the name of the font's not going to show up because there are no letters in this font. There's only images. So you got to remember this was called Modern Pictograms. And so I know that this is it right here. I see my images. I'm in the M's here. So I know this is the right font. So I'm going to select it. And what you notice is that my letters, which used to be T-E-X-T, -E are now replaced with four images. Now, one of the downsides to using icon fonts is that you can't preview every icon uh, just by doing this. What you'd actually have to do is this. Now watch, I'm going to get rid of this for a minute. I'm going to bring in a new text box and I want to see all the characters that are in this icon font. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and type the alphabet. G H I J K L M N O P Q R S T U V W X Y Z. And I'm actually going to select it all and copy it and then paste it. And in the second row, I'm going to go ahead and make it all caps. And so now I have the whole alphabet in both lowercase and capitals. Then what I'm going to do is add a row with all the numbers. Okay. And so now I have all the major characters that typically make up a font. I'm not going to include all the punctuation, but of course you could do that as well. Now I'm going to select it all and go ahead and use that uh, modern pictograms font. Let me just see where it was. I have a lot of fonts. There it is right there. And so now I get a view of all the fonts or at least most of the images that are in this font. 
and I can find the one I want, and then I can kind of play with it a little bit. So for example, let's say I'm making a, I don't know, a, uh, a, a uh, infographic in Keynote. And in my infographic, I need to have uh, an iPod, okay, an image of an iPad. So that's the one I want. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that character, get rid of the whole box, and then paste it again. And I'm left with just this, okay? Now, I'm just gonna copy it, and I could paste it as many times as I want. Now, here's what's cool about this. Because this is a font, I can edit it in all sorts of different ways, just like I would with any font. I can make it larger by changing the font size. Right now I'm at a 38, I can make it 144, make it a much bigger font. And it reacts just like it would with any font. Okay. Similarly, I can change the color. Let me just make this a little wider. I can change the color of the font. So I could go ahead and change the color just like I would with any font to a yellow or green or whatever I want, whatever works for me. In addition, I can go into my inspector and edit this just like I would with any text. I can align it to the left or to the center or to the right. I can change how the how spaced apart the characters are. I can put them all really close together if I wanted to. Okay, kind of like that. Uh, you can change the line height, the inset margin. You can change pretty much anything you want. It's so neat, you can actually add uh, shadows to it. Go ahead and give this a white shadow. Okay. And uh, you can achieve all sorts of different uh, kind of neat effects with this. Let me just change this to something that looks a little better. Okay, so something like that. Uh, make this 100%. Okay, and so you can do all sorts of neat things with this. Um, and because it's a font, like I said, you can treat it just like you would with any font. You can have it build in and out like you would with any text, etc. It's great because no matter how big you make this, let me show you what I mean. Okay, just have one of them here. Uh, I'm gonna make it, let me turn the shadow off for a second. I'm gonna make it like, let's make it like 600 point font and it enlarges, but you notice it doesn't get pixelated at all. It's perfect, it's crisp. Um, I can do whatever I want with it. Um, and so though it takes a little bit of time to find the exact icon you're looking for, uh, it's a great set to have in your arsenal, in your font arsenal here. Uh, to, to play with. I have quite a few sets of different icon fonts installed on my computer um, that I use all the time. And it's just a nice, neat way. Uh, the other, a, a neat way to include graphics in your slideshow. Another neat thing about this though is that because it's a font and not an image, it keeps your file size down. And so if you were to go and email this, this presentation to someone or email it to yourself, the file size is not gonna be that large because it's not weighed down by big bulky graphics. Instead, it just has a font with it. Now, the one thing I wanna caution you is if you do go to share a Keynote presentation with one of these icon fonts used in it, the other person using it has to have that icon font installed on their computer as well for it to function. So if you share this file with someone, you should also share that OTF file, which they can then install, and then it'll work perfectly. Uh, so that's one thing to keep in mind. Uh, but that's, that's it. That's just another great tip for you on uh, Keynote. Thanks for listening.